Hey, welcome folks. Mill Spick Ops Mickey here. Listen, this is going to be your monkey minute. I know it's Tuesday. I'm just throwing a wrench in there and uh, messing with your schedule. But nonetheless, I haven't been uh, doing a great job at putting these together uh, just because I've been ill occupied with a thousand other things. And uh, I just uh, hopefully uh, I get a little grace for this. But uh, nonetheless, they are important. Uh, these are going to be headlines that aren't covered in your mainstream media stuff for the most part. Uh, things that we, uh, if you blink, you miss them. Uh, I wanted to put this out here. There's several of them. Uh, some of them are a little disturbing. Uh, as a matter of fact, this first one's going to be disturbing. So without further ado, let's get over to it uh, and look at what's going on in the world. But uh, kicking it off here, check this. Uh, this is at lifenews.com. This is actually an article that was put out September 9th, 2022, just about uh, two, two weeks ago. Uh, Planned Parenthood annual report shows it killed 383,000 babies in abortions more than ever before. Uh, just to kind of break that down, that means Planned Parenthood killed 1,050 babies in abortions every single day, or, in another word, uh, one baby in every uh, in abortion every 82 seconds. Is that not staggering? Uh, nonetheless, uh, thank God for Roe v. Wade. We'll see if the number uh, it, it should change dramatically. But uh, that's just the United States alone. That's what's absolutely crazy about this now. Here's the other piece of this, just to kind of put that in perspective, 383,000 in a year. If you go to the Vietnam War and you look at the total number of deaths in Vietnam War from 1965 to 1974, that's a nine-year period, U.S. and allied deaths, military deaths total, 282,000 over a nine-year period. Planned Parenthood is killing more babies in the womb in one year. Then what happened in a Vietnam War over a nine-year period? That is just staggering. But uh, let's take a look at what the Bible says about babies. Uh, the fact that uh, Jeremiah 1.5 tells you, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. And before you were born, I consecrated you. That tells you, folks, he knows you before we went in the womb. That means we are alive and well inside the womb. Now here's another one for you. Uh, Psalm 139.13 it says, for you formed my inward parts, you knitted me together in my mother's womb. I praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Uh, it's just absolutely staggering uh, that, uh, you know, there's so much um, reassurance in the Bible that tells us that we are alive and well when we're in that womb. And the fact that God puts us in there, uh, it's just, you know... This is murder, straight up, okay? Now, let me tell you what it also says in Luke 17, 2, about those that hurt little children. Uh, it says, It would be better for him to have a millstone hung around his neck and to be thrown into the sea than to cause one of these little ones to stumble. Uh, so just let that sink in for a minute. All right, let's move on over here to the next headline. Pretty crazy. Uh, it says here, this is actually Israeli, all Israeli news. Uh, this is an article from September 19th. It says, does the arrival of five red heifers in Israel signal third temple end times? I'd say, yes, it does. Just goes to show you where we are in the world. Uh, these five, by the way, came from the great state of Texas, I might add. Uh, but nonetheless, these these have been certified and uh, they won't... Uh, uh, they're, these won't be sacrificed. These are going to be mated is what they'll do is they'll breed them. I say mated. Uh, they'll be breeding these these heifers uh, so that uh, they can uh, get more volume because when the third temple stands up, which ain't too far away, uh, then uh, they're going to be needing these red heifers for ceremonies in order to, uh, uh, you know, to usher in their antichrist, so to speak. Uh, they don't know that, but you and I know that, right? And so uh, Third Temple stand-up is just a milestone within the Bible. Daniel uh, talks about it, 927, uh, but it is also talked about in uh, Revelations as it talks about the two witnesses standing in the gate uh, or in the courtyard. Um, and so, yeah, that uh, just kind of goes to show you if you snap that chalk line uh, as to where we are today and how close we are to exiting, that right there will tell you everything you need to know, okay? All right, here's one for you. Uh, the first German district blackout simulation. Now, we've seen them do modeling for all kinds of different things, a dark winter, uh, a bunch of different things. Uh, you know, They look at uh, what are going to be the effects of, of X, Y, and Z if it were to happen or take place. But check this out. They're saying that uh, 400 deaths in 96 hours if uh, German municipalities are getting serious and preparing for a concrete consequence of a widespread power blackout. 
400 dead in 96 hours. That is insane. Uh, I mean, nothing compared to Planned Parenthood, uh, you know, but at the end of the day, they're running models and simulation to see what the outcome is going to be on their citizens. It's, uh, it's just staggering. Uh, it just goes to show you what's coming, right? Okay, now here's another one. Talk about Christian persecution. We're proud of killing him. These are Muslim persecutors uh, of Christians in July of 2022. As you can see the picture here of uh, the cross going onto the flames. Absolutely crazy. But this is what's been going on. Uh, this is Burkina Faso uh, in Africa. Uh, and they're saying that they're seeing an in increase uh, in the attacks among uh, not only Jews, but Christians in the region. And uh, we know Jesus tells us that we're going to be persecuted. So uh, data point, again, you got the red heifers and all this stuff going on around the world. Uh, one more just to kind of stick in your uh, feather in your cap to show, eh, probably not the right term, but nonetheless, uh, just another data point, okay? All right, now here's one for you. Iraq and Syria tighten security along their border. Now, I got a theme with this, and I'm going to point something out very quickly. Just notice the amount of border wars that are going on. You got Iraq and Syria, you got Armenia, you've got things happening uh, all around the world, all over Africa, uh, where people are actually just going after each other. Uh, what does Matthew 24 say? It says, nation shall rise up against nation. That is ethnos against ethnos, uh, the Greek word for it. And uh, that means people rising up against people. Uh, but these border uh, things that are going on, it's all part of it. Wars and rumors of wars, this forced migration that the Great Reset talks about. Just another data point, uh, but that was just three hours ago. As you can see, uh, they take their border security pretty seriously, don't they? Isn't that funny? Uh, look at this. Over here on the, uh, this is going to be the Philadelphia in uh, Inquirer. Baltic nations close their borders to Russians over the Ukraine war. Uh, this is taking place up in Estonia, Latvia, Lithuania, and in Poland, where they're saying, we're not taking any more people. Uh, it's amazing how they can do it in other countries, but not in ours. Now, this is the one I'm kind of leading up to that you guys are going to be like, oh, the irony. Yes, check this out. You get the, the drunk goat over here on national interest uh, right up on this blog. Uh, but Pelosi visits Armenia, uh, and, and her whole trip is about border violence. Yet we allow our border to be wide slap open. Uh, and our politicians are flying around the world telling people how they need to be running their borders, uh, but we total with a total disregard to our own borders. If that doesn't just uh, add salt to the wound, uh, it's absolutely insane. Uh, these people, I'm telling you right now, uh, they are not for the people, by the people. They don't care about us. Uh, the people that we send into Washington, D.C. are just marching to their own agenda, and uh, they ignore everything that we are telling them. So anyway... Uh, if that doesn't get you going. Now, remember, uh, if you're wondering about salvation as we look at the world around you, I know there are some out there, and I felt it important to go ahead and point this out uh, because there are folks, believe it or not, that read this and go, I think it's time I need to start getting right with the Lord. Uh, you know, it's a wake-up call. Uh, the world is is declining rapidly uh, all around. And if it's not just economy, it's uh, it's famine, it's wars, rumors of wars, it's everything revelation the book of Revelation told us was going to happen. So if you're worried about your salvation and wondering if, hey, if it's just remember, it's never too late. If you're upright and breathing right now, it's not too late, okay? So just remember, it's as simple as ABC. A, all you got to do is admit that you're a sinner. Romans 3.23, for we all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. B, believe that Jesus Christ is the Lord and died for your sins. Acts 16.31, believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved, period. And see, call upon his name and confess those sins. First John 1 John 1.9, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. Now remember, the Bible even tells us that once you confess that sin and uh, you have been saved, that God throws it as far east as to west. So you may not be able to forgive yourself, but he has forgiven you. All right? Um, very, very important. Okay. Now, last thing is, for those that are already saved, just remember that uh, your fight isn't finished until I've snatched you up, okay? We got a lot of work to do here, uh, and if it's uh, not evident by the amount of abortions through Planned Parenthood or the border wars or all the things that are going on in the world, uh, if you've already been saved and you're a Christian, man, roll up those sleeves. It is time to get busy. We got a lot of work to do.
All right, listen, that's going to be it for today. I hope you have a blessed and uh, amazing rest of the day and week, and uh, we'll see you tomorrow uh, in our next sit rep. Be safe out there. God bless. Monkey out.